The Exchange Online Service in Microsoft 365 has an online archiving and auto archiving feature, which is not known to a lot of people. In this video, we would be looking into how to enable it and set the archive policy, which is known as retention policy on a user's mailbox. So first step is to ensure that your user has an Exchange Online license, which provides the mailbox and also understand the storage limits based on subscription assigned. So for us to be able to do that, we'll have to access our account by either using the URL office.com, bottle.office.com, or if you want to go directly to the admin center, we'll use um, admin.microsoft.com. But in this case, we are logged in as office.com. So on the left hand side, we click on admin and this will take us to the main admin center. Then we'll click on users, active users. This will show a list of all our active users. And then for us to see that the user has an Exchange Online um, license assigned, we just click on the display name of the user and then we'll click on licenses and apps. So we'll scroll down, click on apps as this will list all the features the user has. So in this case, our user has an Exchange Online Plan 2 license. So just to give us like a brief, um, detail on each subscription and what storage space comes with that subscription. So let me quickly um, go to this URL. Yeah, so if you use it at Microsoft 365 Business Basic and Business Standard or Business Standard, you have by default a primary 50 gig storage space. But if you're using the business premium, you also have 50 gig. However, if you're using the Microsoft 365 Enterprise E3 or E5, you have 100 gig for your primary storage for mailbox. You have Office 365 Enterprise E1 50 gig, the Office 365 Enterprise E3 E5 100 gig. And if you're using the Enterprise F3, you have 2 gig. And if you want to enable the online um, archive feature, which we'll be looking into, um, if if you're on the business basic or business standard, you have additional 50 gig when you have archive enabled. And if you're using the business um, premium, you have 100 gig, which is 1.5 terabyte. Same thing applies. If you're using the enterprise E3, E5, you have 100 gig. And for the um, enterprise E1, you have 50. For the enterprise E3, E5 for Office 365, you have the 100 gig. However, for the enterprise Office 365 F3, archiving is not available. So let's quickly look into this particular user and enable the archive. So since we've confirmed that our user has the exchange license, which is still on the admin center, we'll click on show all so that we can navigate to the exchange admin center and we'll click on exchange, which is right down here. So this brings us to the exchange admin admin center and we'll see on the mailboxes the user we want to set this up for. We'll see all our users listed and we'll click on the display name for the user. Then we go to other services to make any um, customized settings. We can do that on this page. But since we're just focusing on archiving, we'll click on others. And as we can see for this particular user, online archiving is not enabled. So I'd like to point this out. Majority of users use the Outlook desktop archiving feature however this doesn't give you additional storage they still use your default primary um, mailbox storage so it's usually advisable to go for the online archive because that gives you additional storage to your primary storage so we just come to manage mail mailbox archive and as we click on um, enable for this user we allow it to set up a default name or you can customize what name you want for it to display for the online archive and I'll just click on save so now this is enabled however we want to set up a policy where um, emails older than a particular um, period should be moved to archive. So just for us to reconfirm, you click on the display name of the user, you click on others and yes, archive is enabled. Um, by default, every user or exchange user has a retention policy that is default. So if you want, however, you can't really know from this section of the admin center, what this policy is until it should do that. We need to go back to the main admin center and navigate to the compliance admin page. So we'll click on the compliance admin page and this is where we can set up the policy. 
for the archive. The unique thing about archive, um, online archive is there's the general policy that can be applied to the mailbox and there is a personal policy that can be applied to a folder in your mailbox. So if it's just the inbox folder you want the archiving to apply to, we can set that up. If it's just the sent item or even if it's a subfolder in your inbox. Very cool. So this is the Compliance Admin Center. Would we'll look into the Compliance Admin Center in later videos, but since we're focusing in this video on archiving, we'll come to the Data Lifecycle Management section and we'll click on the Exchange Legacy. So now this is where we have the policy policy that we have and under the default policy we have different tags we have the tag one month delete one week delete one year delete five years delete six month delete default and so many tags that can be applied to a user's mailbox so we don't want this we want to set up something customized for ourselves now for us to set up a policy we need to attach a tag to that policy so first thing is we'll need to come to the MRM retention tags and see if there's any tag listed here that suits our desire. So here are all the list of tags that we have and if we notice we have some on the personal and we have some on the default. Now this personal means you can apply this tag to a policy and assign this policy to a folder. Like I said earlier, you have your inbox folder in your mailbox and you want okay five years delete in inbox then you can apply this tag to a policy and then that policy can be applied to just the inbox folder while the default is applying to the whole mailbox that is it's applied to your inbox folder your sent items your deleted your junk that's um, for example where we have default two years move to archive so this will apply to the all mailbox once it's assigned to a policy now this is a default um, junk mail created if you want to delete this is also personal that is never delete which can be assigned to folders as mentioned so let's say for example we want to go with the default two years move to archive and maybe we want to um, go with a personal one year move to archive so since we have tags that we want so say for example the tags that are listed here are not what we want we can always create a new tag so we give the tag a name um, let, we can say test tag you could give it a description um, we could type in three days move to archive something like that and then we'll click on next so what we're going to do is so this is what you select if you want the um, tag to be default as I mentioned earlier we have the default we have the default folder that is if you want it to be a particular folder automatically so you have the option to select inbox your deleted items junk your sent items sync issue and etc or if you want it to be personal, that is, you would manually have to go to your Outlook on the web. For this one, we would um, try default and then we'll do next. So this is where you put in the number of days um, you want. So since we want three days in our description, we just type in three. If you want um, a year, you type in the uh, numbers of year in days so it has to be in days not in year because if you type in one that means you want emails that are one day old to archive so it has to be in days so we want it to go to archive and not delete so what we'll have to do is click on move item to archive here you that means you want it to delete and allow recovery so this will go to the deleted items stay in the deleted items and will not delete and this is you want it to permanently never delete emails so it depends on what feature you want um, to be applied on the mailbox however since we're dealing with archiving we're going to go with move item to archive and then we'll click on next and here is the summary of the policy you've created and we'll do submit so yes tag created successfully if we refresh we should see our test tag with three days move to archive
So in this case, since we are going with our first two option, which is the default two years move to archive and one year move to archive for personal, then we'll come to our retention policy, create a policy and we can type in Mona policy or you can give it any name and this is where you add the tags so we we'll click on add tag and we'll select our default two years multi archive and our personal multi archive or we could just do for this particular policy we could just do default two years multi archive and then we'll click on add and we can create another um, policy where we um, just assign the personal one year move to archive or we could just do both on this one policy and we'll click on add so this adds the the tags to the policy and we'll click on next and we'll do submit for that so this is done our policy has been created and now we have to go back to the exchange admin center to assign it to the user that we want this policy to be effective on their mailbox so we already have the exchange admin open we click on the user's display name then we go to mailbox we we'll scroll down and select manage mailbox policy and right here we should see our policy on the retention policy and then we we'll click on this and save good you won't see the changes immediately especially for mailboxes that are already full so it usually takes um seven days for every um move to take place so yes there's a powershell command that we can run if you want the move to be immediate we'll have a look at that later but yes this is just for since the mailbox is pretty new storage is still fine but we're just setting it up for future reference yes we have enabled archive from others archive enabled and you see the storage allocated to this mailbox and we have also set up a policy for our archive which is let me save that again all right and then we can close let's refresh the page just to be sure that our archive has archive policy has taken effect so let's come back to mailboxes yes voila it's not showing the um policy we have created now for us to um assign the personal remember we added a personal tag to the policy so all we just need to do is let's open our outlook on the web so we click on outlook allow this to load so in the outlook um web so what we have to do is we come to settings and then we'll click on view all outlook settings uh right here and then we go to retention policies so here we look for the policy tag that we want to assign if the policy tag we want to assign to the folder is not listed all we just have to do is click on add new policy look for that particular policy tag which is the personal one year move to archive check the box for that tag and then we click on save once we click on save the tag should be showing here so all we just we could close and then we come to the inbox folder right click on that folder we should see assign policy so by default it will take over this folder will take over the um the primary policy which is the default policy however since we want to set a unique um, retention policy to archive we just click on personal one year move to archive and this would only apply to the inbox while the default policy will apply to other folders which is like your sent and if you want to apply the same thing to your sent item junk all you just need to do is right click assign policy and you should see the tag listed and you can select the tag so yeah so that's it for enabling archive for your mailbox assigning archive policy which is the retention policy to your mailbox um, setting up the policy by creating either custom tag or using the default tag from the compliance admin center and ensuring that you assign that custom policy that you have created in the exchange admin center to this particular mailbox so now when it comes to the auto archiving the auto archiving it's not enabled by default you also have to enable that but that option is not available on the admin center you have to use a powershell command to enable that and that's that takes an effect when the user's mailbox archive mailbox is 
exhausted or is close to 99% of getting um, exhausted. So for the auto archiving, um, 10 gig is allocated to your primary archiving mailbox when it's almost exhausted. So say for example, this particular user's um, archive is like 90% exhausted, you would have additional 10 gig to 10 gig allocated to your um, archive mailbox. So every time it's 90% full, you get additional 10 gig. So if your 110 is 90% full, you get additional 10, making it 120. And that's how it keeps increasing for the mailbox. For your archive, the name for the archive is in place archive. This is the name that will be displayed in your mailbox on Outlook web. However, for the desktop application, which is Outlook on the desktop, you will have online archive showing. So and how do you access your archive for example all you just have to do is come to your outlook on the web if you're using outlook web you scroll down and voila you see your in place archive listed and this would have all your subfolders some people get worried oh archive will everything be backed up in a particular folder no that's the unique thing about in place archive of the action feature so in place archive it creates folder for each of your primary folder mailboxes so if it's the inbox you will see the inbox because my mailbox is pretty um, empty and since it's not yet a year old uh, mailboxes you won't see um, the difference here. But for mailboxes that are quite older and the archive is already taking effect, the policy is already working on the user's mailbox, it creates the folder for each of the primary folders. So if it's inbox, you see your inbox listed. If it's a sent item, same deleted, same junk, you have all those folders listed. Even if it's a subfolders in your inbox or sent item, you have everything listed in your in place archive. So the same thing applies in the Outlook desktop client. So all you just need to do is launch Outlook, scroll down to the bottom, and you will see online archive with your name or your email address showing so, so today we had a look at enabling archive the storage allocated based on your subscription and for online archive also based on your subscription how to enable archive how to set retention policy assign um, your policy a tag based on how you want the emails to be moved and assign the policy to the user from the exchange admin center and how to assign a personal tag to a folder from your outlook web thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye